Do you know when the best time of day is to photograph night photos? I'll give you a hint. It's not in the middle of the night. It's at blue hour, essentially dusk. So if you have some fantastic images that you've taken at the edge of daylight, whether that's morning blue hour or evening blue hour that you'd like to enhance using Lightroom, then this is the video for you. You'll learn things such as adjusting the camera profile, enhancing the color without touching the saturation slider, fixing highlight clippings, masking, and more. So if you're ready to dive into blue hour editing, let's get started. So I'm gonna start with this one because I wanna work on one of our, our new attendees images today. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do when I come into the develop module, I'm just going to close this so I have a bit more real estate here, is to change the camera profile. And I've talked about this a lot. Let me just turn my pointer on. Um, if you're curious about why I have this green thing, as you can see, it's a function of my, it's a little plugin I have for my computer. So it's not a part of Lightroom or Luminar. This is a little green pointer that I have just so that you can see where my mouse is. All right. So the first thing I want to do is go in and change the camera profile because I want to see if I can get anything that has it's closer to the color that I'm looking for. Right, landscape looks a little purple and contrasty. Portrait actually is a little purple as well. I almost never choose the ones that are vivid because I want to control the amount of saturation myself. Camera standard looks pretty good. They're all leaning a bit towards the purple side, if you notice that. So I'm going to choose camera standard. And then I'm just going to adjust the color from there. Okay. So one of the things you want to um, be aware of when you're doing photos like this at night, which is if you're doing a quote night photo is you actually want blue hour. Okay. So this is the right time of day to do to do night photos, to be honest. So not at midnight. And I'll show you one that is taken later. Um, the first thing I want to, the next thing I want to do is straighten it because you can see the horizon here is quite crooked. Okay. So I'm going to open the crop tool <clears throat> and then I'm just going to click auto because it should straighten it. And if it doesn't, I've got a few other options. Okay. So see what that did. That looks much better. And it also took care of that thing on the left there. Okay. So I'm just going to, I want to keep this light over here, keep that nice reflection. So that looks pretty good. If it didn't do a good job straightening it, the other option is you can just do it manually and sort of eyeball it when you grab the corner, or you can use this little ruler. Okay. And the ruler is great because you can put it on the horizon. So I'm clicking here on the left and then drag it over and put the line across the horizon like that. Okay. So same sort of crop, same result. Okay. So now I've got a camera profile and I've straightened the image. Okay. Now I want to, I want to shift this color a little bit. So I'm going to just try auto and see what it comes up with. I eh, don't like that color either. I'm going to try daylight next. Now daylight I know tends to add more magenta, but it actually is better than it and what it was shot, right? So I like the yellow level here, but I liked it with less magenta. So I'm just going to stay with where it was shot at and dial this magenta down. Okay, so that's the tint. And if I want more blue, I can dial it down even more here on the yellow. Okay, so now we're getting close to what I think is something that looks good. So I want these lights to look yellowy orange and the sky to be blue and I want purple, right? And you've got some dust spots up in the sky here so we can use the clone and I'm gonna use the content aware brush. So this is the spot removal and just draw over those. If you want to see your spots, right? I press T on the, on the keyboard to get this toolbar. If you click this here, any other spots that you have will show up. So I'm looking for ones in the sky that I might not be able to see, okay? That's just a little helpful tool. Turn it off, there we go. 
Okay, so now I've got it straightened. The color is better. Now I want to work on uh, exposure. So I'm just going to do a shift double click on the blacks and the whites. Okay, now it brought the white slider down um, and it's trying to correct for anything that's clipping. Right? In this case, I'm going to leave it at zero because the highlights themselves are clipping, which is fine. They're actually light sources, right? So your light sources like the sun, uh, it's okay if those are clipping, okay? Because if you try to bring them down, sometimes you start to get them looking muddy, okay? So I want to keep a nice highlight. So I'm actually going to clip them a little bit like so. I'll fix this stuff in the water in a moment, okay? Because I don't want that too bright. These are too bright. I'm going to give it a little bit of clarity, but I'm not going to do too much overall. And the same with texture because um, this was taken at a nice low ISO, but if we do a lot of texture, right, you can see that it does bring out the grain a little bit. Okay, so keeping the texture off of the sky, I'm going to do that a different way when I add some texture. Now you notice that the histogram, everything is bunched up way over here on the left, meaning it's really dark. Okay, so the left side of your histogram is black. So I'm going to brighten it overall a little bit, pulling from the exposure slider, which is midtones. Okay, I talked about this last week. You can also put your mouse over the over the graph and literally just grab it here, like so, like that. And now I think, you see the sky is brighter in this corner. So I want to even that out a little bit. And I also want to fix these highlights. Okay, so now we're going to start to get into some um, local adjustments. So all of these are global adjustments. They affect the whole image. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to color mixer, first of all. And this is a new change that came with the latest Lightroom. They used to call it the HSL panel. And we still have HSL under the mixer side. We also have point color. Okay. So I'm going to try point color here on this part of the sky to see if I can isolate just this blue. Okay. So I'm going to click there. And then I'm going to visualize using this little checkbox here which part of the sky is being selected. So when you click this, it shows the part that's selected in color and everything else turns monochrome. Okay. So I want less of the saturated colors. So I'm just going to remove some of that, see how that's working. And I want less of the darker colors. So I just want that part of the sky. See how we're getting close there? Look at that. I've just got that corner of the sky now. Okay. Now I can start to make the adjustment. So that's just the selection part down here. Okay. Now I can darken it. Let's look at that. See that? Uh, I can even shift the color if it's not matching. Okay. Give it a bit more saturation. I still got too much selected over here. So let me Bring that in a little tighter. There we go. That looks better. Look at that. Okay. So if I want to see the what it's doing, see it's just affecting that corner. Okay. Look at that. I think that looks great. Okay. And while I'm here, I want to affect all of the blues, okay? So I want to shift the blue tone a bit because I still feel like it's purple. So I'm going to just click on the middle of the sky and try and shift the colors, okay? So that's more purple. So I'm clicking and holding. And I don't want to go too far, but I like that color a little better, okay? And there's still some purple in here. See that? See what that's doing? Okay. I'm also going to shift the orange a little bit so it's less orange and a bit more yellow. Okay, so more orange, more yellow. So I've got more yellow and blue versus purple. Okay. If I'm still getting purple, I can literally just dial the purple down. See how much purple there is in there? Or I can shift the purple a bit more like that. So look at how powerful this tool is, right? It's really great. 
Okay, next I want to deal with these highlights in the water that are too bright. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask and I'm going to do that by just clicking on a graduated um, tool. So you can literally use a keyboard shortcut M and it gives you this little crosshairs. So I'm just going to drag it up like that. Okay. So it's only going to affect the bottom part of the image. And now I'm going to bring the highlights down. Okay. And if I want to see where the clipping is, okay, let me turn this overlay off. You can see the little red indicators here. Now I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. You can download a PDF cheat sheet and follow along with the keyboard shortcuts. I have a cat on my desk. Okay, move your bum. There we go. <laughs> see the tail? Okay, move. Keep going. I have a cat. Come on. Come on, Munch. Move your bum. We have a cat problem on the desk. Okay, there we go. So now I can see that I've got these highlights clipping, and I'm going to bring it down just until, see that? I'm looking at the middle part here. Let me zoom in a little bit. So can you see the highlights clipping? Not clipping. And then it gets more color in that area. Okay. I still feel like it's too orange, but that's better. Okay. Now, if I want to darken the sky more or brighten up this part of the image, I can do that as well. Okay. So while I still have the bottom selected, I can brighten the shadows a little bit. And notice if I add black, okay, it not only darkens the blacks, but it darkens everything and it intensifies the colors, okay? So be very careful with black. And also notice I didn't touch the vibrance and saturation sliders. Everything is done with these sliders up here. And if you want more color, black, okay? So less black, we get a little softer image. More black, we get a darker, intense image. So I kind of like the softer one, actually, like that. I still feel like it's it's orange and magenta. Take a little bit more out. Okay, and I still feel like I can go further with this point color. Like so. So there's our before. Let me deal with this cat here. There's the before and after. Okay. I think that's a great image. I might um, decide to crop this little light out over here just because it's kind of drawing us away from the main subjects, which is like this lighthouse and these boats here. So I might come in and, and do a little bit more of a crop. Uh, let's just keep the aspect ratio. something like that. Check out my complete Lightroom course for everything you need to know about Lightroom Classic. There's a link below for you in the description area. If you enjoy my teaching style and you want to learn Lightroom Classic from start to finish, then it might just be the course for you. If you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, check out one on the screen now.